Hey, what's going down, everybody? This your boy, Jay Mason's out of the Time Machine on WUAG on our 3 Point FM. Playing the best new and old school hip-hop, R&B, and everything else in between. With me on the phone right now, I have Brenda K. Starr, freestyle legend and the one that gave a little-known singer named Mariah Carey her big break. Brenda, welcome to the Time Machine. Hey, baby. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing fine. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this interview with me. Anytime. My pleasure. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get it started. How did you get your start singing prior to getting your deal? Um, well, I've always sang since I can remember. I guess since I'm like three years old, my dad was in the music industry, and I used to watch him on TV and just sing along with him and just watch a lot of shows like like um, Soul Train and all these other musical shows like MTV and just sing along and basically I got my interest band and my mom put me in singing lessons when I was like 12 and then from there I got my first record deal when I was 13 since I was a baby I guess. Mm, so pretty much you got your deal when you was going through the puberty stage and clear cell pads and all of that good stuff right? <laughs> <laughs> Those were my roller skating days I think my big break was when I when I used to go roller skating I mean I, everybody had their time when they used to roller skate at a dance roller rink and I basically Basically, I met Harry Belafonte, and he really gave me my first really big break. He put me down with the movie Beat Street, mm -hmm. and that's where, where, where it all kicked off. Okay, so you had the Jordans look in the skating rink, and then Harry Belafonte saw you and was like, hey, you want to be in this movie? Now, by you being in Beat Street, that opened up a lot of avenues, and also the system was in Beat Street as well. When you got your deal, did you know like what direction you wanted to go into, like more R&B or R&B mixed with the Latin flavor? Well, I always knew I wanted to do urban music, which is obviously R&B. I mean, my mom put me for my birthday when I was going to be 13. She put me in the studio. Uh, two weeks before my birthday, and I cut Love on a Two-Way Street, which was um, a remake that uh, Stacey Lattisall did, and then I cut the version. Then from there, they played it at the roller rink, and from there on, my friends used to tell me, oh, you should do R&B music, you have a really good sound, and I used to love to listen to, like, um, Regina Bell, Roberta Flack, and just listening to Stacey Lattisall being so young, I was like, wait, I could do this, so then I just, I liked the urban direction, even though I did some urban music, but I was more known for my pop dance music and uh, that's the direction I went in but um, you know I, I really believe that music is versatile so you know it's just the, really the way you put the twist on the music on your style so I, I definitely had an interest more in urban music. And tell me about the cut that you had out called Breakfast in Bed. <laughs> That was actually picked by the record company. I wasn't a huge fan of that song, but you know, you had to, you had to have some versatility. And in them days, you weren't able to have the artist creative control the way you wanted to. And being young, they never really give you that type of credibility. They they really take control of the musical aspect of it all. But you know, it ended up doing well for me, and it put me on tour with New Kids on the Block. But I think that the song that really blew up for me was I Still Believe in That, where I got more my recognition in terms of my crossover from pop to urban up to um, adult contemporary which crossed me over to the Latin scene because I got to do I Still Believe in Spanish being that I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. Now how did I Believe come about? Who was the songwriters and did you know that that record was going to be that big of a hit? Um, I actually I believe that it was going to do well because I listened to the lyrics and like I said starting out really young in the music industry I always had a vibe for a hit and that was the one song that I was able to pick when I got it was given to me in a country version but after I heard it I had it produced by Yamiya Diodato and it was written by Antonine Armada basically I just kind of put a twist to it on my own and it had just such a great producer Diodato who worked with Cool and the Gang and after that I just said you know what this is a great song and I think you know it'll do well for me and it, and it really did I mean I was I was really surprised because I thought me being as young as I was I wouldn't be accepted, but it worked out well. It turned out to be a love song for everybody of any age. Right, so pretty much after that record, no longer could you go in the mall by yourself and you're like, Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. So you were getting mobbed and while you was trying to go and buy your nice little jeans and your Pantene Pro-V. I think a lot of people mostly recognize me after seeing the video and um, doing a lot of appearances, but I mean, I always stay true to myself and, and I stayed living in the projects until, I mean, I moved out when I was 17 literally 16 but at 17 I, I you know I traveled so much that I ended up giving up my apartment and staying with my mom I bought my mom a house when I was 23 
And then she ended up moving to Florida and not liking it and missing where we used to live. So she went back to where we grew up. You know, I mean, I was successful, but I never really took it on like that. I kind of still went back to where I live and I still do to date and, and visit my old friends that I grew up with. But people stop me and it's more of a pleasure opposed to being like, yeah, I'm all that because I know I'm not. I know it's just a job and I'm grateful every day for the opportunity that, that was given to me that I've been able to provide for all four of my kids and still have a, a successful career and some type of longevity in it. But yeah, people stop me, but I, I still go to the malls alone. Even when I had a big record, I would go with my sister or my brothers or just chill with my mom. You know, it's kind of hard for me to have a really a best friend. It was, my best friend was my mom and my sister, right. my brother. Mm, so what was it like for you opening up for New Kids on the Block, one of the biggest boy groups in the world when they were about to make their peak? Yeah. It was great, you know, they were cool people. We had our tour bus. I was managed by Johnny Wright, who discovered Britney Spears, and it, it, it was a great experience because I love the idea of being on a tour bus, and I started really touring heavily after I had my first daughter, and that's when I went out on tour with new kids. And I was, I was about 23, and my daughter went on the bus with us. And, you know, they were like uncles to my to my daughter, and we were all cool. You know, we all hung out, and, and it was mostly, uh, you know, a circle of family because we all became family because we were on the road for four or five months. So it, it was great. You know, they're cool people. They're just as normal as you and I. And, of course, now, like I said, they're back, and, of course, their fans are going monkey nuts. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> Over New Kids being back, I'm sure some of them probably went up to the attic, dust off those old 16 magazines and the New Kids posters and trying to still fit in their New Kids shirts from, like, 1989. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, but I'm happy for them. See, that's just a, the show. It doesn't matter how the time changes. The music evolves, and it always comes back. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's the best part about being in the music industry. You know, music doesn't, it doesn't stay the same. It always changes. But eventually it'll come back around, just like the freestyle music did. You know, people are starting, my daughter and my son, they listen to music and they hear freestyle. They're like, wow, this is great. Let me hear it. So, you know, it, the music happens to come back, and that's what it's about. So I'm happy for them because it just shows that now there's, now there's a new men on the block. Right. Now, how did you happen to discover Mariah Carey and give her her big break? 